Hi, we are back in Mumbai for another episode of This Is My Architecture. I am Abhishek from AWS and with me I have Anand from Jubilant Foodworks. Welcome Anand. Thank you Abhishek. So Anand, tell us a bit about uh, Jubilant Foodworks. Sure. Uh, Jubilant Foodworks is the master franchisee for Domino's and Dunkin' Donuts in South Asia. Uh, we've got around 1250 restaurants in these three countries in South Asia. Uh, we deliver around 200,000 pizzas every day to around 100,000 customers and that to under 30 minutes. As far as I'm concerned, I head the digital department in uh, Jubilant uh, that comprises of the digital assets and the data engineering part. So that's a lot of customers you have and you're looking at one of, uh, one of your customers. Uh, so every time I order pizza, you are kind of responsible for ensuring that I get it on time. Right? Yeah. That's fantastic. Uh, I mean, to run a business like uh, Jubilant Foodworks, I mean, uh, I'm sure there are plenty of challenges, right? So why don't you share, you know, what are those things that keep you up at night? Sure. Uh, there are multiple challenges that we're trying to solve by being present on uh, the given architecture. So one problem is, of course, uh, the problem of scale. Uh, since we hit around 1,000 or 1,500 orders per minute during our peak hours, uh, ensuring that we are up during uh, lunchtime, during dinner time, during weekends, during festivities, uh, that's of course a big challenge. But in the context of today's discussion, the primary challenge is data availability. I see. Uh, before we had our presence uh, on AWS in the form of a data lake, uh, one of the biggest problems was multiple versions of truth. Uh, there would be different pipelines from each source of truth, leading to a different version of uh, the data being available to the business stakeholders. The second problem was data latency. Uh, because of the latency that was inherent in the data pipelines, uh, it would take weeks before campaign insights would be available to the marketing team and so on and so forth. And we could, of course, not wait that long. So, and uh, these two problems and many more we are trying to solve by being present on, uh, on the data warehouse provided by AWS. Fantastic. Uh, so, you know, why don't you take us through how you've uh, solved these uh, problems? Sure. Uh, so, Abhishek, as you can see, we've got our sources of truth uh, laid out here. Yeah. Uh, we've got our POS machines, which are our point of sale uh, systems in 1,200 restaurants. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've got our e-commerce systems, which is our app, mobile website, and desktop website here. Any transaction that happens in the e-commerce uh, part, which of course flows into our POS machines so that they can be served from the restaurants. Yep. Uh, it also flows into our e-commerce database, which is a MySQL system. Uh, data from the POS machines that flows into a consolidation server, which is on AWS Cloud. From the e-commerce database, we use AWS database management, uh, sorry, database migration service to take that data into a raw layer in S3, which is our data lake. We've got our own ETL scripts that transform this data and load it into S3 uh, from the POS database. So this is the raw layer which all of uh, this data goes to. Okay, so I see all of your data is uh, sitting in S3 here. I see you're using, uh, you know, Redshift, uh, Redshift Spectrum, EMR here. Uh, so tell us, you know, how you, how these services are being used. Sure. Uh, so Redshift is essentially our data warehouse. Uh, but before we get there, what happens is that, like I said, all of this data gets dumped into a raw uh, bucket, mm -hmm. which is all the data dump. Yeah. We then use EMR jobs to move that data back into a curated layer, which is another bucket, bucket within S3. Yeah. Uh, that curated layer is used to feed third-party services as well. But again, we use EMR to move that data from the S3 bucket, the curated layer, to Redshift as well. Okay, so you're loading the data there. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Okay. Uh, but we load only the hot data. Okay. So in the context of uh, Jubilant, we you know, define hot data as data that's relevant to around the last five or six months. Okay. Anything beyond that is cold or warm data that resides within S3. Uh, as you can see, we've got Redshift Spectrum here as well, and that's, that's a huge cost saver for us and performance enhancer as well. So what it does is that when a user queries Redshift for information, if, if all of that information is there in Redshift, well and good. If it has to refer to data within the data lake, which is the you know, S3 bucket, then using Spectrum, it you know, transparently joins the data and provides it to the user, uh, and hence saving that cost. Fantastic. So you get uh, you know faster results, and you're saving out on uh, cost as well. And yeah. the best part, it's serverless. Yeah. Right? Uh, great. Uh, you know, I also see you have Athena here, yeah. right? So while you have Redshift and Spectrum, tell us a bit about what Athena does. Here. Oh yes, Athena has been a lifesaver. Yeah. 
And I'll tell you why. Because, uh, you know, there's only five or six months of data in Redshift, mm -hmm. but years of data lie within S3. Okay. Uh, and uh, the business often needs to refer to that data. For example, year-on-year -year growth, quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth, and so on and so forth. For that, the data analyst fires SQL-like queries into S3, gets that data, and provides those insights to the business. So all of the business insights that need to be provided on an ad hoc basis, hundreds of them every day, are powered by Athena. Great. So basically, you know, what you're focusing on a day-to-day -day basis is the last five, six months of data. Yep. That's your hot data. So that's the transactional data you're working yep. with. Uh, so using Redshift and you're further optimizing it by using Redshift Spectrum. Uh, but for the business users who want to access data beyond last five, six months, uh, you know, the data still resides in S3. Yeah. And you, instead of running your own uh, you know, infrastructure, managing your own server, you simply use Athena, which is serverless, and you get hold of uh, those data, that's right? right? Yeah. Uh, I think this is uh, this is really uh, you know great. Um, I mean, uh, it's a very clever way of using various uh, analytic services that we have. Uh, so, what's next on the roadmap? You know, how are you iterating over it? Oh yes, uh, we are just getting started. Yeah. So uh, we talked about a few sources of truth here. Yeah. Uh, two key sources of truth, which is our HRIS, which is the human resource data, uh, that's yet to be plugged in. And we've got our inventory data from SAP that's yet to be plugged in. So those are key components, uh, and that's coming up soon in yeah. in, in the next phase. Uh, the other thing that I'm really le looking forward to is uh, SageMaker uh, because we've got all our years of data here and that can be used as training data for the SageMaker models, which will power our forecasting engines and our personalization engines, both to be used for enhanced consumer experience. Fantastic. You know, makes sense. You already have uh, quite a bit of data in S3, and then you mentioned you're pulling in data from other sources like yeah. SAP into it as well. And of course, with SageMaker, it's really easy to you know build, train, and deploy your model and get yeah. more insights, uh, you know, and do forecasting on it. Right. Uh, oh, this is fantastic, uh, Anand. I learned a lot, uh, you know, about your architecture today. You know, thank you for coming and sharing all these thank details you. with me. Um, and thank you for watching. This is my architecture.